Yeah. 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 Yeah.
shining river, soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful set in place and it, it was a, a good thing and it caused God's work to go forward. The work had to be done with the, with the widows also. Couldn't leave that undone. And so the plan fixed. Remember this was the first I guess um, split or division in the church. It was dealt with so quickly that the split disappeared. Wasn't there any longer. Um, and then we, we spent a couple of weeks talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit and being and receiving the Holy Spirit. And that brings us to tonight. We're going to read chapter 6, verse 8 through 15, the rest of the chapter there, and talk about Stephen. Uh, Stephen's name means crown, so it's kind of interesting. Um, Stephanos, I believe is the right word for his name, but it's translated crown, or the meaning of it is crown. So starting in chapter 6, verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, and Cyrenians, and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. Imagine that. <coughs> right? Yeah. Um, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Uh, then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes that came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to take a look at that. Next week, Lord willing, we will talk about at least parts of his really long <coughs> reply to the council. Um, it's excellent. It's, it's wonderful. It shows some things about Stephen that we need to be aware of. And so we'll do that next week if we can. Lord, well, let's pray before we start. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We do thank you for the food and 
the fellowship that's uh, evident again tonight, and for so many that, that have come out again just faithfully um, to hear your word uh, read and, and then followed. And, uh, Lord, more specifically, just, Lord, to, to fill a need that they had that only you can fill. Lord, we're always here for that, and uh, we always need to know more about you because we want to love you more, sure. value you more in our lives. Uh, Lord, um, we ask you to fill every need tonight. Every heart would be open to you tonight, Lord, and uh, there'd be silent prayers before the time of prayer, silent prayers that go up to you about a need that each person has, yes. and they just look to you and trust and have faith that it would be filled, and we'll praise you for everything you do tonight. In Christ's name, amen. 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 All right, let's look here. Verse 8, we'll go verse at a time as we usually do. And let, let's look, first of all, in verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Now, this we know this is the second mention of Stephen. If you got your Bible, look, look at verse 5. There you go. We see the saying, pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. And so we see him being listed first. And that's importance in Scripture. They actually do that for some reason. Peter is almost always listed first among disciples. And John is usually close after. Um, it's not that they were better. It's simply that there was some sort of importance attached um, to those people. And we know that this man is going to be the first martyr. So we can see there. And, and look, looking at the verse, verse 8, that we just said, notice what it says. He sounds like he's, a, he's an apostle, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Look what it says. Full of faith and power did wonders and miracles among the people. Up to this time, we had limited, really, most of that to just the apostles. And what was the reason of the miracles? Why did they do the miracles? Think Jesus, and that'll give you the answer. What's the reason for the miracles that they performed? Same reason Jesus. To prove, prove who he was. Yeah. yeah, he proved who he was. And so they're proving that they're from God, yeah. that their message is approved of God. Uh, it, it, it also drew a crowd, and mm -hmm. that was necessary. You, wanted, you didn't have a big PA system drive around with your um, Volkswagen <laughs> bus. And, uh, well, never mind, I'd love to have one of those. Anyway, um, we see here... Uh, then in verse 10, we can see, look, look down at verse 10, um, we see that uh, there in verse 5, these men full of faith and the Holy Ghost, then in verse 10, that he's got, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake, and, and we see um, the, the, um, the use that God is putting him through, it's, it's just like the disciples, if you look back, remember Peter receives the Holy Spirit, on the day of Pentecost, along with the others, Peter, though, stands up and speaks, and people got saved. The Jews were saved. They were there for one of the festivals, one of the feasts, and 3,000 were saved. And we said that that was not of Peter, but it's of the grace of God working through Peter. Yes? Peter was full of the Holy Spirit. We, we saw evidence in the second chapter when the Holy Spirit came upon all those in attendance that were saved, that were believers, as promised by Jesus, it would happen, and it did. And we see the same type of thing going on here with this man now that he just a deacon. He's just waiting on tables, right? But but we see that, that that's not that that's not his only calling. He's obviously going to be used for different things than just waiting on the widows, the Greek widows waiting on their tables and making sure that they have food or uh, the small amount of money that they, they might need. Um, so it's obvious that he did much more than wait on tables, and he occupies a prominent position from the very first, because his name is listed first, and then it goes through what, what he went through. Um, Notice what he goes through is basically the same as what the disciples went through. And let's go back. I mean, they didn't die. They were imprisoned, questioned, released, imprisoned, questioned, beat. So now we have imprisoned, questioned, killed, right? And think of Jesus now. You know, the same 
see the same pattern, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, we see the words there in verse 8 again, that he is full of faith and power, that in every single place that I read today in, in looking at that particular phrase, it, it is also sometimes read full of grace, mm -hmm. and they're acceptable because it's talking about the same thing. If you're full of faith, that's because of the grace of God. You're full of his grace, right? So you're full of faith. So let's look back. We, we talked about being uh, full of the Holy Spirit. Is God's grace necessary for you to be full of the Holy, filled with the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to want it, too. He, he's not going to force you to be full of the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit because you believe. But we're talking about giving up control of your life. God will put that thought in your mind. That's his grace. God will make it happen. That's his grace. What will happen then? He'll use you a certain way. That's his grace. Yes? And that's, that's going to be what happens. Let me give you an example. Just me, and this is small potatoes. I understand that. But I got saved. I didn't know any, anything, but I got saved. And I knew that happened. I still do. And whenever I have any sort of little slip-ups about, am I really? Do you ever have those thoughts? Like, because you're, you're still having bad thoughts about people and you still say mean things and you're still selfish and you're still self. Well, I do. And um, so I think about, think back, and, and I know. I know the date. Well, I don't know the date because it's near midnight. So it was either the 7th or the 8th. Depending on if it was after midnight. So it was close. Um, I know where I was, what I was doing, I know what I read, and I, I remember my prayer, because I repeated it many times over the next several days and months. Um, we had a, an evangelist come through at Broadway, an evangelist. He, he was well known in this area. He's from North Carolina, I think, really country, way more country than some of you. And <laughs> why wow, could this guy preach? And um, I found out that I got saved for a reason. I, I've been saved about eight, nine months. Mm -hmm. I, I got baptized in November in an unheated uh, baptistry. Mm -hmm. That was fun. <laughs> and then, you know, I was putting in time. I was just showing up, and I would miss sometimes, and God didn't kill me, so I'd miss again. <laughs> but this evangelist came through, and I'd never gone to a revival. And this guy preached, this gentleman preached, and he was an evangelist for real. And um, I went forward and prayed when the invitation was, was made because I wasn't doing anything. I got saved, but he said, God saved me to do something, right? He saved you to do something, too. And look, I went down by his grace. You understand that? Walking down that aisle. That, it was his grace that touched me that night. Mm -hmm. And I prayed. I did not know what he wanted me to do. I didn't say, hey, I want to be a teacher. I didn't, right. didn't know. But when I left, Pastor Magger grabbed a hold of me like he always did. Like, like that. <laughs> How you doing? And um, I said, you know, I want to do something. I want to get busy. He said, well, I want you to, too. What do you think you should do? I said, I only know how to teach. Because I was a high school teacher. So he said, well, okay. By his grace, I got put in the classroom. <laughs> By his grace, I was under his uh, pastorate because he was a wonderful teacher of Bible. Uh, and, and he did that at the college, too, out there where you are. Um, Atlantic Baptist used to be there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it still is. The is. building's there, but the building's it's there. College something college. totally different now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 he taught, and he taught at the church if you wanted to come. He, he would teach on Saturdays. He would teach in the evenings. He would mm -hmm. teach. If, if he could get a group, he taught. That's what his whole life. That's Ron Maggard's dad. That's why Ron's like that. Mm -hmm. Ron never saw a country that he didn't want to go into, mm -hmm. especially if it's dangerous. <laughs> and, and share the gospel. Mm -hmm. And I say all that to say this. Um, it's the same working with him, with me, with you, right. with Pastor Maggard, with 
Pastor Maggard used to work on the really, really, really high electric lines, you know, the really mm. like a couple hundred yeah. feet up. Mm. And he said the height didn't bother him. I said, I hope not, mm. you know, up that high. high voltage, yeah. But when he got saved, he quit that job and, and, and he didn't go back. It's amazing, right? And his wife said, oh, Jim, you've ruined everything. Because she wasn't saved either. And she thought it would just change her life. And it did. It did, yeah. And they, they were in the pastorate for over 60 years, and she played the piano all that time. Mm. Okay, Christ. so that's the grace of God, though. And so that's what we're talking about here. Look, we're, we're in verse 8. He's full of faith and power and get, did great wonders and miracles among the people. He was full of things that only the Holy Spirit can provide. And so, if, if you want, then you go ask for it. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. When, you, when we read verse chapter 7, Stephen's answer to the Sanhedrin, you're going to see this is an educated man. Yeah. The, this guy, now, I want you to think about this. Stephen, none of this is provable, but it's very, very possible. It's very possible that Stephen was educated under Gamaliel. Mm -hmm. Who was Gamaliel? Who else did he educate? Paul. Paul. Yeah. Saul. Yes. And, and Saul, at that time, was a big dog. In, in, young, young, but he was the chief guy to go out and arrest these new Christians. Mm -hmm. Zealous more than any of his counterparts. Mm -hmm. He went after ed, any indication of Christianity in you. And had you arrested, beat, killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and he's there. We know that he's there, right? In chapter 7, mm -hmm. yeah. when Stephen is, is stoned, the chances are very good that they were together under Gamaliel, <laughs> that they, know, they knew each other, and that they were one of the reasons there was such hatred against Stephen in this stoning is because. He had deserted his guys. He, he was a traitor to the Judaistic, the Judaism, the Jews' religion. And he had gotten saved. Now, so what do you think Paul is going to go through? Mm -hmm. Think about it, because Paul, after this death, Paul gets converted right after this death. Right. He's on his way to Damascus. He just saw possibly one of his best buddies stoned to death. And it says he was consenting unto his death. Which means he was part of them that probably questioned him, mm. and he may have thrown some stones. Don't know any of that, but he was there. And this man again, he's well educated in the the, the Jews' uh, um, history, and then the salvation. He, he was a saved he was a saved Jew that knew Judaism. He knew just like Paul. You remember Paul could. He, how did Paul, what did Paul use to get people saved? He quoted the Old Testament. Right. What, did Je, what did Jesus do to talk Quote. to his disciples? Quoted the, the Old Testament. Testament. Every line he could find. That's me. That's talking about me. That's me. That's me. All the way through the uh, Old Testament because there was no new. And so you see that Stephen, uh, again, we haven't gotten to that address, but we'll see that next week. Um, that um, the powers of the Holy Spirit, this, this means, this same thing, faith means walking in God's grace. We're talking about the grace of God. What is, what is grace? What is God's grace? What does it mean? It's love. It is love, but there's more. It's faith. Favor. 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 You don't deserve. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so here, here's the deal. By, by grace, we're saved by faith. He could have said, this is what I've determined, that you never sin one more time in your life. Only way to heaven. Mm -hmm. You get a clean slate right now, but if you ever slip up, going to hell. Mm -hmm. No, by his grace, grace, you say by faith. That's it. It's not your life. Should your life change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah but a change in life is not what gets you to heaven. Mm -hmm. Right? We know right. that. You change because you are saved. You don't, you don't change to be saved. Right. It's a big difference. Right? right? It's a big difference. So we see this, this grace is the power that was given to him. So, so I want you to think back. The lame man is healed. 
right? 40 some years old, lame, never had to walk, right? He's, he's the one in Temple? Yes. And, okay. and how? Was it Peter? No. Oh. What did Peter say? But in Jesus. have I not? It's them. Well, it's By the name, I do have. That it's him, right? It's him. So Peter was illustrating that grace. Peter, by the grace of God, preached a sermon. They got 3,000 saved on the day of Pentecost. Peter, by the grace of God, um, had a hand in healing this man, the, the one that couldn't walk. And the sermon to these people that thought, thought it was him, and he said, oh, no, no, let me tell you who it's from. Jesus Christ, and he preached Jesus unto them. By grace, he preached that, and by grace, what happened? 5,000 people got saved, yeah. right? In other words, not a one of us, not a one of them deserve any of that. God did it because he loves them. So that, that was my, the first answer was his grace and love. It's driven by his love. Mm -hmm. He's full of grace because he's full of love. Mm -hmm. um, so what's our part in it? Ask for it. Want it. How do you know, how, how will he know you want it? He can see your heart. It isn't just words. What is it that you want? I want to be, I don't know exactly. I didn't know. But here it's 42 years later, and I'm still teaching Bible. That's not too shabby, is it? I'm only 45, so. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Debbie, stop. <laughs> okay. So look, look in Acts 5.12. Look in Acts 5.12. we got to go forward from this now. 5.12. 5.12 we say, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all of one accord in Solomon's porch. And again, we're seeing the same thing with Stephen now. It's exactly the same thing. Remember, we are seeing this is the formation of the church. Earliest church is right here. Day of Pentecost, it formed. Holy Spirit came down. People got saved. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. First church. And it's growing. And so that's what Acts is. It's showing the growth of the church there in Jerusalem. Later on, it'll show the growth in Thessalonica and in Ephesus and in all these other places, right? It shows Paul's travels and Peter's travels. To other places where churches um, grow, but again, it's all by the grace of God that He used those people. Uh, you say, "Why do I keep talking about that?" Because we read this thing and we we think that Spurgeon was just awesome. No, the the Holy Spirit used Spurgeon by the grace of God. I don't know why, but I know Spurgeon was willing. Why does he pick out Peter? Why did he pick out John as being the beloved? Yeah. I don't know. But he did. And, and I know this. Of the people that are used by God, it was not forced. It was given to them, and they did, and they did what, what was there to do. They carried through. And that, so that's for you and I. Do you want to go forward with your life then tell God mm -hmm. as often as you can. To, I don't know what you want from God. Somebody was talking about there's some man that prays to put somebody in the way to witness to mm -hmm. every day. Sure. If that's your belief, if you think that that's, then pray about it. If you don't know it is, pray about it anyway. That might be why you're here. Could it be as a witness? Oh, absolutely. Amen. How do right. I know that? Because you know what happened to you. You're a witness to what happened in your life. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. And that's all that's necessary to, to know. So, all right, let, let's continue on. And we can see, look, we're still in the same verse. Can you believe it? Yes, you can. <laughs> all right. He did great wonders and miracles <clears throat> among the people. And then in verse 9... Then there arose in the synagogue, and so forth. Stephen attracted attention. The attention, the, the giving of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, attention. They saw, so they gathered him up. Man, what are you doing? Don't talk in his name anymore. 
The lame man is healed. Attention again. 5,000 people saved this time. And it says there's more and more. You know, it, it just exploded. Drew attention. So Stephen, with these signs and wonders in verse 8, he draws the attention of folks that would do him harm. Um, he had done these great wonders and miracles among the people. Listen, it was in public. Look, among the people, verse 8. It, it's not hidden. It's just like the lame man. It's out there, buddy. It's right at there where everybody's gathered. Wonderful place, right? They were already gathered. And then more came when he's being healed. It's not in a corner. It's not hidden away somewhere. Everyone could see what was going on and hear what was going on. So it's not hidden. And, and it proves the validity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The validity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the attention is attractive. So let's look at this verse 9. There arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and, and them of Cilicia and Asia, disputing with Stephen. So these are all Jews that are of the Jewish faith. The law, right? The law of Moses. That's what they believe. The sacrifice system and all of those things, right? And they had rejected Jesus when he was alive, and they're still rejecting him. But let's, let's look at these folks. These are, um, each of these probably had their own synagogue. They're in Jerusalem or nearby. Like, let's say 10 people came in from Cilicia, and they were neighbors, and they knew each other, and they'd come for this feast, and they stayed. They would form their own little church, their, their synagogue. And in all of these, the Cyrenians, the Liber Libertines, the Alexandrians, yeah. and those of Asia. Um, so the leaders of those are the people that are going to come in dispute with um, Stephen. So they see what Stephen's doing. They see another commotion going on. Man, we just beat those guys over there within an inch of their life. Remember, we talked about it as a real beating. That the, the, the 12 went through. Right. And they're commanded, don't do it again. So this guy, who is this guy? This guy, miracles, people getting healed and other things going on and it attracts all this attention. People are getting saved. So the leaders from these, actually they're, they're foreigners that have come back to Jerusalem. They're foreigners, but they're Jews. Right. Right? They've come back to Jerusalem and the leaders of those people are the ones that are going to confront Stephen as he preached Jesus. Now, there's a reason that they're so harsh, probably. The Jews, everywhere they've gone, have gone through some bad stuff. They've always been in the minority, and there's always been a little Hitler around. Yeah. Trying to, to kill them, to wipe them off, get them to leave. And so what they had to do there in their country is be very sure that everything is exactly right. Don't ever change anything. Keep it right. Let's keep everybody out. In other words, uh, let's cross every T and dot every I every day. Make sure everything is according to the law exactly right. Because if they slipped up, they'd just lose their, their foreign synagogue. We're talking about when they were still back in the country. Right. So they were the kind that were... <clears throat> it's kind of the way we feel. I, I feel this way anyway. There's a shrinking number of churches that believe the Bible the way it's written. Mm -hmm. Exactly. True statement. Oh, true. Right, true. Right, true. I feel like this is one uh, of a shrinking number of churches that you that's described in Nehemiah as a, as a nail. Right, a nail that, that God's put there, and I'm going to hang everything on you all <laughs> for the faith, right here, right here in this place. Right. Now, does that mean we should be all puffed up? No. no. Uh, look, that's by God's grace. That's right. What, uh, you hear a buddy say this all the time, we shouldn't be here anymore. But, but, you know, by the grace of God, we are. But there's a reason. It's because we are... Keeping the Bible as the only source of anything in this church. Yes. Yes. Amen. I believe that. Mm -hmm. 
I believe that. And, and if, if we go away, sometimes it's because God had enough of us here. And I don't know the reason why. I can't, can't guess. But I'm saying that while we're here, if we believe the Bible, we ought to be doing what's in the Bible. And this is witnessing here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to encourage it again. Witness. You only got a couple of years, and you're going to be so old you won't feel like it. Right. <laughs> old people have told me that. <laughs> okay, now, now the libertine, look, look in verse 9. The libertines are Jewish freedmen, or they were freed Jewish slaves, and they'd been kicked out of Rome. That's who the libertines were. Um, there's a very good chance that Saul or Paul was a member of the Cilicia synagogue because Paul, Saul, was of Cilicia. Um, Tarsus was his city, and it was in the country of Cilicia. So Paul was probably, or Saul was probably of Cilicia. He could have also been one of the libertines, but nobody really knows. He could have been both. Because he was a rising star. He, he could have carried both easily because of his education and his mind. Um, if he was one of those, he was definitely disputing. One of those that was disputing was Stephen. Yes. And the idea here is Stephen was probably also part of one of those synagogues until he got saved. Right? Good man. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Um, it, it all kind of ties together, and a lot of it is conjecture, um, but it would make sense. You can't just invent an education like he had, because you either had it or you didn't, mm -hmm. and you couldn't get there on your own. It, somebody had to get you in, you know, into the inner circle and so forth. Okay, um, we see uh, verse 10. So the, verse 9 Verse 8, Stephen is, is, is talked about again, full of faith and power, all these miracles being worked. He draws attention. And so these people are disputing. What are they disputing? The, but the, the validity of, the, uh, of uh, Stephen's okay. witness. Right, it's the gospel. They, yes. Exactly right. They, they were disputing what Stephen was teaching, which was the same thing that Peter was teaching. Right. And the other apostles were teaching that got them arrested and beat. The same thing. They were teaching Jesus that he is the son of God, that you killed him, that he rose from the dead, and he sits on the right hand of God. And if you believe him, your sins are forgiven. That, that's, what, that's what they preached. Nothing bad. Nothing bad. But they were, well, he'll get killed for it. It was like they were convicted, but... They couldn't handle it. Could not handle it. And some did. Saul did, finally. And Stephen did. And even the fishermen and, and the uh, yeah. Levi, the, the, the um, tax collector, and the doctor. Um, what's his name? Luke. Luke. Um, all of them would have been raised under the law of Moses. Right. The Judaism. They all had to give up the lie. Right? And... Um, so they did. And by the way, you and I had to give up the lie. I don't know what your lie was. I know what mine was. It was that balance scale. And I knew I had more good than bad. I, I just knew it. I wanted to know it. <laughs> Wasn't true. Verse 10. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. They were not able to resist the spirit by which he spake. <clears throat> Again, he was possibly trained by, trained by Gamaliel, who had trained Saul. Uh, what could explain the vehemence of their attack is that they would think that Stephen was a turncoat, which I mentioned. Um, Paul, after his conversion, would, would face the same thing. You remember when Paul does that whole long list? For four days I was in the deep. Uh, four times I was beat. 39 stripes and... Right? It, one time, they thought he died. He was stoned in one of the little towns, Iconium, I think, or Derbe, one of those. 
And they, they supposed he was dead. So they dragged him out of the city. And he stood up. <laughs> a couple days later, he went back to check on the new converts in that same city. He did. We'll get to that. It's in Acts. Is that brave or is that the Holy Spirit? That's the Holy Spirit. Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And him being willing to go where he, he need, needed to go. Um, in any case, Stephen's words could not be successfully argued against. His willingness to dispute them drove them to go further than just words. So he got into it with them. He back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. You did not see that from Peter, right? He simply repeated the truth every time. But what it looks like Stephen did is, because it doesn't record what he said to them, these, these people that had confronted him, the words that they record that are recorded in chapter 7 are what he says to the Sanhedrin. But this is to the people from these synagogues that came along there in verse 9. Um, so it doesn't say, but it says they were disputing. And they couldn't, over, in other words, if this was a debate team, he won and got the gold medal. All right. He, he beat them using what? Scripture. Right. Listen, these folks knew Scripture. They were the heads of synagogues. Mm -hmm. So they knew the same verse he knew, but they did not know it was talking about Jesus. Right. Blinded. Right. Don't you know that that's talked about in the Bible? The yeah. ears didn't hear. They had ears, mm -hmm. but they couldn't perceive. They had eyes, they couldn't see. Mm -hmm. And and God left them that way, the, the ones that were um, choosing to be that way. Turn, if you would, we'll come right back, but we'll turn quickly to John 15. Now, John 15, if you'll remember, this is right after that Last Supper. They're on their way to the garden. And at the garden, Jesus will be arrested, questioned, beat, crucified. So this is this is a really squished in time period. He's teaching his disciples much. And in John 15, we'll just look at a few of those verses that illustrate what we just talked about because it was true then. These verses are going to be true now, I believe, even in America. It's, it's coming, I think. Um, John 15, starting in verse 18. 15, 18. Jesus says to his disciples, If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. How will they know that? More than that. Yeah, he's come. now he's told them, but you know, they still don't get a hold of that. But they're not going to kill you. Remember, Peter even said, No, they won't. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, Get thee behind me, yeah, Satan. Right? Yeah. Verse 19 If ye were of the world, listen, that's where we were born in right there. If ye were of the world, he should have said, If you were still of the world, but, but the, we, we got born into the kingdom of God. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're still living in this world, but we got a resting place, the kingdom of God, with the king. Yeah? Yes. That's mm -hmm. a pretty good payoff, isn't it? Because yeah. he did it all. Mm -hmm. We just have to believe. If you were in the world, of the world, the world would love his own, but because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Yes. If I had not come and spoken unto them, uh, unto them they had not sinned. They had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth uh, my father also. And then one last verse. If I had not done among them the works, there you go, which none other man did, they had not sinned, but now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. The, the point of this is the persecution because that's what this chapter is leading into, chapter 7, the persecution of Stephen, and you'll remember there's been persecution every step of the way in the church. 
again, this this nation has been really good about not doing that. Um, but this nation has had court cases and different things that have gone on. And you all know this. You cannot pray in school because that's a branch of the government and you can't have religion in government. Because the Constitution says it. Last part's a lie. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, separation of church and state means the government cannot do anything to, uh, for or against the church. You cannot favor it or disfavor a church. That's all it means. It doesn't mean the government can't be Christian. Mm -hmm. It means it cannot favor a church over another church. Mm -hmm. um, there's a wall of separation written in a letter, not the Constitution, Thomas Jefferson to a Baptist preacher. Baptist preacher was afraid about freedom of religion. I mean, we're founding of the nation a long time ago, 1700s, right? Right, right. And Thomas Jefferson said, you do not need to worry about it. We, what we have written in the Constitution is that it establishes something like a wall between the church and the state. So the modern idiot, I mean, the modern justices right. in court cases have said that wall means there can't be any mixing. No, the wall is to keep the government out of the church. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All, everything else you hear is a lie. Yeah. But listen, that's a court case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that means this. Listen, has things changed in our government because you can't have church in the government? Absolutely. Would Listen, would, I want you to think about something. When I was a kid, and you were a kid too, way before me. <laughs> <laughs> One second, I'll get you in just a second. All right. In, in the in the U.S. that I grew up in, I heard about a God a lot, and we talked last week. There were prayers in school, public school. Uh, there was Bible reading, public school. Not everyone, and no one forced it, but it was there. Um, I did go to Sunday school. We moved around because my dad was military, but we did go to Sunday school wherever we went. Uh, they found a church where we'd go to Sunday school, my brother, my sister, and me. And um, so it was like you heard about it all the time. Now, I never <coughs> learned the truth about salvation until I was 31. All right? But God was real. God was real to me. Yeah. And people... People did not fear about doing things out in public as a Christian at all. None of that happened. Yeah. Now I want you to think. I want you to think how things have changed just real quick. Hardly anybody goes to church anymore. You can take a look at us and you can see that's number one. Mm -hmm. So the kids aren't going to a church. So they're not going to hear even lies about God yeah. or, or half-truth. Right. right. The parents aren't taking them, so the parents don't know either. Mm -hmm. If they're saved, they'd be taking them to church. Mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Terry, did you all? You had kids, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Um, the schools can't teach it or right. talk about it. Where do the young learn then? Don't. They, don't. they don't. They don't. You want to know why people are like they are today? Yeah. Because why they don't have God in their lives. And the, and the government led the way. Right. And That's Satan right. would have it no other way. Yeah. Satan would have it no other way. That's right? right? Yeah. So don't bring the Bible in. Don't mm -hmm. pray. Don't put the nativity scene out. Don't talk about anything. If you talk about Christian as a politician, they'll say, oh, you're just trying to get votes. Maybe they are, but some of them aren't. They're actually Christians, probably. Yeah, right. um, so things have changed for the wrong way, and as things stay changed, if they stay changed long enough, you start to believe lies. Mm -hmm. One of the lies made up about Jews is they used to kill babies and drink their blood. That was that's why you would kill a Jew a long time ago. They had all these horrible things about Jews, and none of them was true. Because they were this isolated group. They can't fight back. 
Now you think about this. We just talked about this. Here's this little church here that believes. This isolated. <clears throat> if you're isolated, you can't fight back. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Who believes in what we believe? The young folks don't because they don't know. Right. There's no one to tell them. Right? right? It's a, kind of a scary place. But, but Jesus, in these verses that we just read in John, he's told us ahead of time, hey, if you act right, you're going to face persecution. Mm -hmm. If you live a Christian life where people can see your Christianity, you are going to face persecution. Mm -hmm. I did, so so will you. Right. right? Well, Ike, what did you want to say? Well, I was just going to say that uh, it's not so much the separation of church and state, which is evolved there, but the people have lost their Christianity ethics. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and they don't carry that over into their government into their lifestyle. That's right. It's not part of their life at all. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. You're exactly right. All right, let's finish up these thoughts here real quick. Yeah, with me. Um, let's see. Just a second. <laughs> Jesus in these verses in John 15, starting verse 18 with that we read, he's saying this hatred is certain, so is persecution. Their ignorance is the father of the cause. They have both heard me and seen the works, yet they hate me without any cause. The spirit of truth shall testify of me, and you shall be witnesses. And, and we see that in that last verse there in that section. The spirit of truth shall testify of me and you shall be witnesses. That's what we see here. We see the persecution, the hatred, the rage against Peter. They're going to gnash on him with, his teeth, with their teeth mm -hmm. before they stone him. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the, the hatred that's there. So we see the persecution, we see the hatred, but we also see the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, witnessing through these men all of this foretold by Jesus I'm leaving you but this is what's coming after me this is what's coming after me this is still in effect today you have to have the Holy Spirit working actively in whatever you do as witness so how do you do that we talked about that stay away from all evil yes when you do sin confess your sin he's faithful and just to Forgive and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? That means he can fully use you. There's full fellowship restored. You've got that sin out of the way again. And you're saying, I repent. I don't want to do it again. Use me. And so the Holy Spirit can use you the way that God would like. The grand plan set in motion and continuing even until now. That's what Jesus just wrote about there in in. John 15, those few verses. That's the grand plan. Um, in addition to evident scripture knowledge, the verse says he has the wisdom and spirits. So we're looking here, look in verse 10. They were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. So we've talked about that education, but we're also talking about the spirit that we've been mentioning. The spirit testifies of Christ through Stephen. So Stephen is saying the word, but it's the spirit that's opening the understanding of the people right. that are listening. So when I got saved, it was reading a tract, but the tract didn't speak to me. The Holy Spirit, through the words of God on that tract, worked in me. And your story is the same. Somebody told you, and you believe, but the, the spirit was doing the work. The person was a mouthpiece, or the piece of paper was the mouthpiece, but the Holy Spirit was doing the work. Um, one, one last thing, and then we'll go to the last couple of verses real, real briefly. The fruit of the filling of the Spirit, grace, power, and wisdom. That's what it says Stephen is full of in all the verses, right? Amen. He's full of. 
the Spirit, grace, power, and wisdom. The fruit is this, the wonders and miracles that he performed, and the conviction with which he spoke. So, because there's people getting saved. He's tell, there's miracles, there's works going on, people are drawing through, he's telling them the gospel. The fruit of being, uh, the, the fruit of all of this filling is what comes out in his life. If we're full of the Holy Spirit, there'll be fruit that comes out in people that are around you also. I mean, we talk about fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, love, joy, peace, peace. long-suffering, those things. Mm -hmm. But also there'll be people that are saved because you witness to them. Right? The Holy Spirit will be using you that way, according to these verses, anyway. All right, then verse 11 and 12. Let's go real quick with, through these. Then they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. In verse 12, they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, came upon him, caught him, and brought him to the council. So we see in 11 and 12, suborn means they bribed men to lie. It's all it is. They gave money to lie. Gee, that couldn't happen today. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. They bribed men to lie about Stephen. We heard blasphemy from Stephen, and we know he's full of the Holy Spirit. There's no blasphemy going on. He's speaking truth. The spirit of truth is in him, yes? And he's speaking truth. So they were going through these crowds, and they were picking out people they know and didn't know, and they were telling lies. Why? Because they were getting money. Yeah. They were getting money. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus, when he was sealed in that tomb, uh, one, one of the four Gospels, it's not John, but I don't remember which one it is, there was money paid so people could say that he was yeah. removed out of that tomb. Right? Right. But there was money paid. And they say that that's what the Jews believe to this day, is that somebody stole his body. Right. I don't remember. It's, it's either Matthew, Mark, or Luke. Anyway, we'll go on. So, so the, the money caused it. So they're going through the crowd, stirring them up, and they got so much commotion going that the big dogs in the synagogue came around and seized Stephen and put him before the council. We heard him blaspheming Moses and God. They stirred up the crowd and the religious leaders, and they got seized. It was a citizen's arrest. Mm -hmm. He dragged them before the Sanhedrin that could do something about it. We think about these, um, these different words. You don't need to turn, but I'll tell you where I'm, I'm going to read out of James 3, verse 5 and 6. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. James 3, 5 and 6. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts its great things. Behold how, how great a matter, a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. Yes, it is. And you can go on and on and on with that whole chapter three of James is about your mouth. These guys use their mouth to have somebody stoned. Mm. All lies. All lies. Stoned because of their lies. Their mouth. Um, they're just liars. Then verse 13 and 14. They, this is the for the hearing. That's stirring up the crowd. Now here's the hearing before the Sanhedrin. They set up false witnesses, which said this man ceases not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and change the custom with much has delivered, uh, delivered us. Uh, those border on truth, mm -hmm. right? But, uh, but they're not, he didn't say it that way, right? He, he didn't say I'm going to come and declare war and knock down this temple. He did say the temple would be knocked down, but he didn't do it. Um, those are just more lies. Uh, probably they were paid also, uh, just like the ones that stirred up the crowd. May have been the same people. And then last verse, verse 15, and we'll be finished with this chapter. And all that sat in the council looked steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. This is amid the lies, and probably there's tumult of questions being asked and shocked reactions. You've seen those pictures of the Jews. They're kind of like Italians. They go crazy, you know. They're all their hands, and they're like, 
Oh, he didn't know cover their ears and oh no, and throw up dirt. It, it wasn't peaceful like we think the courtroom. Mm -hmm. You know, you probably had all sorts of commotion going on, and we have Stephen remain calm. <coughs> think about this. Remember Jesus before his accusers. He didn't even answer them. He said some words, but he didn't answer them. He already proved who he was. They did not want to believe anything he said. Why would he say it again? He actually said that once. I told you once, would you hear it again? <laughs> you know, you didn't believe me the first time. Um, Isaiah 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is done, so he opened not his mouth. And we see that's the peace of, that peace spoken of with Jesus in, in Isaiah 53. We see that same peace on Stephen's face. You know he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know that he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The peace that only comes, God is the God of peace. Mm -hmm. Real peace comes only from the Lord. Yes. Our peace is very short, very brief. It depends on circumstances. God's peace is forever. We know some of that peace from the moment we got saved. You suddenly felt something like the weight's gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's been described that way, and uh, that's accurate, isn't it? But there's mm -hmm. also this like, oh, mm -hmm. wow. You know, to me there was anyway. And that's a peace. The, the, the peace, uh, peace of God when you're saved. And then if you live right, in God's eyes, you, you get the peace of God. He gives you peace on this earth. You're at peace with God. You're at peace, but have peace of God, both. One of them depends on your, your actions as a saved person. So open, it, open not his mouth. Chapter 7 starts the questioning and his long, long answer. So I invite you to read chapter 7 into 8, verse 3. All of chapter 7, and then it ends in 8, verse 3. It talks about Saul. Mm -hmm. We're done. Lord, we thank you again for this time. May it uh, be used in our lives. Take all the glory. Take all the credit, Lord, all the glory for what's done in lives because we learned something tonight out of your word that can change us, cause us to grow more like your son. That's the grand plan for us now that we're saved. And we'll thank you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Amen.